Welcome to the Nutritious and Delicious podcast with me, Bethany. Our mission is to support busy parents all over the world to learn time management while taking care of your nutritional and mental health. After all, a healthy family starts with a healthy parent. And I'm super excited today. I have Charlotte with me here. And Charlotte is the founder and health of Shiro. She has a holistic um, business here where she's coaching moms and who are moms who are stressed out, they're burnt out and they want to feel healthier, happier and have more peace so they can raise healthy kids at home. Thank you for coming on the show today here, Charlotte, and I look forward to you sharing your story and your lessons here with us today. Thanks, Bethany. Super excited uh, to be here with you. I just love, love, love your energy. So thank you. Awesome. Well, I first kind of want to start it off the conversation here today, just kind of you sharing a little bit about your personal story um, and while, why you feel it's like a big problem for um, a lot of moms right now who are raising children through adversity. And I think a lot of people can actually relate to this with everything going on in the world right now. Um, myself included, I've been through quite a bit of adversity myself, um, as we talked about on your podcast. And I think this would be something really insightful for a lot of um, moms out there and kind of the tools and the solutions that you've kind of used yourself um, personally going through what you've gone through. So I would love it if you would share your story with us here today. Yeah. Um, so years ago, I used to work in the mental health industry and um, I would be like, go, go, go working night shift, you know, day shift, afternoon shift, like crazy amount of hours. And um, and I was consistently burning out. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but I was like getting sick. Uh, and when I wasn't working, I was playing sports and then I was having sports injuries. So it was like this constantly like, you know, hitting a little hurdle yeah. going, come on, suck it up. Let's, you know, keep going, um, which I think a lot of moms do as yeah. well. It's like, I'm tough. I can handle this. Let's just plow through it. And I continued this pattern. Now, as I'm like physically, you know, physically working and, and you know, working a crazy amount of hours, I can tell you mentally behind the scenes, I was going through a breakup. I had a miscarriage. I didn't want to feel anything. So I just wanted to throw myself into work, you know, stay as busy as possible, you know, go out with friends. I just wanted to fill my time up to the max so I didn't have to sit right. still with my thoughts. Um, so that was all going on, you know, mentally and emotionally. And this pattern of like running from my emotions continued until eventually I was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 32, you know, 12 wow. years ago now. Yeah, which was crazy. And I was like, I have abs. Like, how do you, how do you fit? And then yes. you get sick. And that made no sense to me. And I remember sitting down with my doctors and I'm like, how could this happen? They're like, oh, you're so young. It must be in your genes. I'm like, I don't know anybody in my family that's had cancer. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then they checked my genes and it wasn't in my genes. I'm like, wow. where does this come from? And yeah, it was crazy. And I remember sitting down with my oncologist and I said, you know, what else can I do besides surgery, chemo and radiation? And he was like, nothing, you know, just, just do that. And you're a good patient. And I'm like, okay. You know, what about diet though? Yeah. And he looked at me as if I had two heads and he was like, diet <laughs> has nothing to do with your health. And I was like, Whoa. <laughs> what? Yeah. And I remember being like so angry at the time. Cause I'm thinking like, you're here to save me. Like mm -hmm. you're here in your, you know, white coat, you know, God coming here to save me. And you're telling me diet has nothing to do with your health. Now I wasn't a nutritionist at the time because I was a mental health professional, but I knew if I ate like crap, I felt like crap. And I knew yeah. if I ate well, I felt good. So I knew I had some kind of correlation to my health. So although I was so upset, like I fueled that energy and kind of dove into the holistic health world and became a holistic um, health coach and a nutritionist and just so I could dive deeper into my own healing. Um, and once I started making these changes and, and, and diving into like stress and burnout, like not, according to the Center of Disease and Control, 90% of illness and disease is stress related. So I knew mm -hmm. this was like a huge component that nobody was really talking about in the physical conventional world. Right. And then in the mental health world, we never really talked about diet or anything. So these two massive industries are not really working together. Um, and then from there, you know, I was I was blown away by the, the changes. You know, I was I slipped and fell and I had lymphedema on my arm. And, and I was told by a world renowned cancer hospital here in Toronto um, that I'm going to have this for the rest of my life. Just go out and put a sleeve on it. And I was like, I don't think so. That's not yeah. going to work for 
me. And I was able to stop and reverse that damage within five days. I was told wow. I would never have kids naturally after going through chemo and don't do fertility treatment because if you're pumping yourself with hormones and because right. I had breast cancer, the chances of cancer coming back was extremely high. And mm. I was able to you know, detox my body, de-stress, flood my body with as many nutrients as possible. And I was able to have my two little monkeys you know, naturally mm. back That's to back. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and I thought, man, if I can do this, anybody can do this. And I think so many women are kind of sitting back, waiting for people to come and save them. Right. And it's like, oh, you, that's why I call my company Health Sheroes. It's like, you've got to be your own Shiro. You've got to come and save yourself. Um, and I think once women kind of learn the tools of like surviving or thriving through adversity, man, anything's possible. Yeah. That's amazing. Like, what a story. Seriously, like, it's, there's a couple of points, like, you know, you're talking about how you had abs and, and cancer at the same time. And it's almost like you're the representation of being healthy, but on the inside, it sounded like a lot of the mental part of it that was being pushed away and the stress accumulated. And, and like you said, 90% of a lot of stress related um, problems end up with cancer and things like that and diseases, right? Like, we cause yeah. a lot of disease in our body from from holding things in or, or not um, having things you know talked about right it's it's a amazing journey and i love how you kind of took this on yourself to become the hero in your own life and i love how you've labeled your business shiro because i think a lot of women um moms in particular are waiting for somebody to save them and I think a lot of the time we need that empowerment to say it's okay and have that permission to maybe step outside of the box of the conventional white lab coat and the people saying, you know, you've got to do this, this and this. Like at the end of the day, like I've had to be the advocate for my own health too. And prior being a nurse myself, having the background and then being a nutrition um, consultant as well, having that holistic background too. Sometimes we kind of have to be the advocate for our own health and our children's health. And I think this is where, you know, everything that's going on in the world, you need to kind of have a bit more of a voice. Um, so I'm really grateful that you're sharing your personal story here today with us. So other women, other families can understand that, you know, this isn't the end of the road for you. Yeah, I, I love everything that you're saying and it's so true. I think a lot of times when we go and we look for these saviors to come in and help us and the, they're telling us things and we're like, really? Like that yeah. doesn't feel right. We have this like a little intuition telling us like, ah, there's gotta be something more or this, right. you know, and I think this is really where like awareness comes in. And I know I remember like sitting down, this is prior to being diagnosed, but I remember sitting down with my family doctor and I said, hey, like something's off with me. Like something's, you know, something's mm -hmm. up. I'm exhausted, I'm tired. You know, my nails are kind of peeling, you know, horizontally, yeah. like something's up. And she's like, oh, Charlotte, you're fine. Like go get a good night's sleep and put some nail hardener on. <laughs> Like, really? Oh my Can you goodness. My iron or something? Yeah, please. That, yeah. That's like, what I, I mean. Shocked. Yeah. There, there's the conventional, right? Like there's the medical side of things. And yes, we do yes. need that, of, of course. But I think yeah. we kind of go into it too late, a lot of people. And we're almost doing like a backtrack of like, now I've got this problem and now I need to undo this problem. Whereas, like you said, you kind of walked in saying, like, I've got all these symptoms. And again, holistically, a lot of the times when you have things like that, we start to look at the root cause of the problem and not mask it with things like nail polish. <laughs> so, 100%. oh my goodness. So I would love if you could actually share with the moms here today, three lessons that have helped you get through this incredibly hard um, and personal journey for yourself. Yeah, so I would say like first things first is we've got to bring awareness into what's really going on in our life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and without awareness, without, you know, being a non-judgmental observer of your own life, you know, what's working, what's not working, we cannot make any changes mm -hmm. to our mood, to how we're feeling, to our physical health. Um, and if we're not making those changes, how can we raise, you know, healthy kids? How can we have yeah. a positive impact on our kids if we're not looking objectively without, you know, judging our life? Um, you know, how can we make those changes? And if somebody sat down with me and said, hey, like, are you stressed out? I, I probably 
probably would have said at the time, no, I'm not stressed. Yeah, yeah I just went through a major breakup. Yeah, I just had a miscarriage, but I'm oh. tough. I can handle it. I'm not stressed. So the first things first is like recognizing what those red flags are. When when do you start like burning out? When are you feeling stressed? Because burnout's just when we're stressed out for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And stress is actually the adult word for fear. So it's like, what am I afraid of? If I'm feeling stressed, what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of being successful and having even even more on my plate because I can barely mm -hmm. handle what's on right now. Am I afraid of yeah. not being good enough because I tried that small business and it didn't work before? Where I've tried weight loss before and it didn't work. You know, why right. is it going to work this time? You know, whatever that is. But it's like take a, a really good inventory. It's like what is working well in your life? What are your personal strengths? What do you value? Um, and and then go back in if you're you know when I'm talking about values. I mean, it could be health, it could be family, it could be spirituality, it could be traveling, having fun. Um, I don't know, love. It could be you know anything. So you could even Google like what are a list of values and and. Prioritize, like write down your top 10 and then go right. in there and kind of rate them like one to five and say, okay, yes, this is my health is my top value, but I'm probably at a one out of five right now. I'm like, okay, I need to improve this area. You know, relationships, I'm about like four out of five, so that's all right. So kind of take an inventory of your life, your finances, your career, what's soul sucking, what lights you up. Because I know a lot of times when I'm working, you know, with clients, they'll, if I ask them, you know, what do you want? Immediately, I would say like 98% all go to tell me what they don't want. I don't right. want to feel like this. I don't want to yeah. look like this. I don't want this job, yep. you know? <laughs> So it's really important to really focus on what you do want, just to start to gain clarity. And when we start bringing that level of awareness and then it's like, okay, now I can start moving, you know, making some of those changes. But I think even just to gain awareness of feeling stressed out and, and knowing what you want, sometimes we've got to ask for help, you know, right. like moms, we don't need to do it all on our own. And, um, and, and I think, breaking you know asking for help down to a three-step process like we need to ask for help you know hey bethany you know can you come over you know thursday night and watch my kids and then we've got to receive it so when thursday rolls around and then i'm like oh man i don't want to bug her you know what i think i can handle it and i call you and i'm like bethany no thanks like i'm yeah. good it's, no we've got to ask for it we've got to be open to receive and then we've got to be open to receive without feeling guilty right and because whoever's there to show up for help they're there because you're allowing them to feel good. What think how good you feel when you show up to help somebody. So whoever is there, there really is like um an even exchange of energy, right? So it's like let me help you and then you're open to receiving. So mm -hmm. really important to bring awareness and, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Definitely. So I, I love that. I was like laughing almost because when you're talking about the values, I was like, has she been in my phone or something? Because that's what I've been doing in the last few days is I've actually like what you just exactly said, I've been writing down like 10 of my values and finding out, you know, because obviously like when we're stressed and we're thinking, and I like how you use the term that um, I think you said about the adults, it's more fear than stress, I guess. Yeah. Um, and when you start to sort of have issues, you're like, well, I'm running into something where something doesn't align. And I was reading something the other day and it dawned on me that whatever your values are and you're not living by them or there's maybe people in your life that aren't living by sort of the values that you have, there's an imbalance. And this is where I think a lot of people get into um, issues with family or friends yeah. um, or even yourself and not feeling like you're living the life you're supposed to, I guess, if that's what a lot of moms start to tell me is that I feel like I've lost my way. I feel like I've lost myself. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I was looking over the values for myself and my business and um, what wasn't aligning. And it was interesting because that's where I think the, the stress and the gaps are. And it's like, well, why, why do I feel that way? Because I have such a strong value in say health and everything that's going on right now is kind of going the opposite way. So it's making mm -hmm. me feel really stressed out. And it's interesting. Like I really, um, didn't really like see that, I guess, until a few days ago for myself, but it's just funny because you said exactly the same thing that I was doing. So <laughs> I love that. I like, really <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So no, and I love that you're doing that at the end of the, you know, oh, I know we're, in, we're filming here in yeah. December, but, um, but here it is at the end of the year. And, and I know this is, you know, it's so important to kind of take inventory. Right. And I love that you're taking ownership too. And I think that's the biggest thing because a lot of times when we're feeling, 
down. We can really feel sorry for ourselves and then we get kind of stuck in this victim mentality. And I owned victim mentality for years leading up to cancer, right up yeah. till cancer, really. Right. Um, and then even if I'm doing it for my kids, well, no, no, I'm doing it for my kids. But even that martyr energy is the same vibrational frequency as that victim energy. Right. And, and I remember when I was going through cancer, somebody had said, well, how did you get here? And, I, and when they said that, I was like, kind of pissed. I'm like, F you with, with love, you know, like, what do you mean? How, I, I didn't choose it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't choose it. I'm just a victim. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my goodness. Like I could see all the patterns leading up to when I was diagnosed. And right. if you have the courage to truly bring awareness and take ownership of exactly where yeah. you are in life, man, that is where the magic happens. Cause now you can start taking changes. Like now you can start making changes, right? right. Cause now you're like, okay, if I got myself here that means i can get myself out with help doesn't mean you have to do it like solo mission but um you know that's that's really a beautiful space to be in but difficult to get there i think a lot of people are scared to change and i think myself included when i think back to like the hardest time in my life where i had to make decisions and make changes because i basically had nowhere else i could go like when you're at the bottom that's it right yeah. so for me i sort of thought of it in terms of I can either make the decisions myself and make these changes and yes, they're going to be scary and I have to do things differently or things are going to start happening without my consent and I'm going to sort of be going along this journey and kicking and screaming along the way and not wanting to make any changes whatsoever and stay stagnant and that's the victim mentality and stay where you are. Yes. So it, it, it's hard to take that empowerment, that first step, but I find a lot of people, myself included, I really had to get to the bottom of the basement before I kind of started to actually make those changes because not because I wanted to, but because I needed to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Love that. So yeah. Sometimes we do have to hit that rock bottom and be like, oh, okay, I do not want to be here. Yeah. How can I call out? You know? Exactly. This is a party yeah. I do not want to attend. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. What's your next one for us here? <laughs> so the next one is you have to feel to heal. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like break down to the breakthrough, like all those cheesy sayings, but it is so true. I, I mean, I, w I think a lot of times when we're like overwhelmed with emotions and you're like, okay, I can barely survive my day. I don't want to think about right. trauma that I went through, you know, last month, never mind childhood or whatever else. But we cannot suppress our emotions and, and we can try like we can throw ourselves into work when i'm too busy or use the kids as an excuse or mm -hmm. you know work out or maybe we're drinking too much wine or exercising too much or eating too much or sleeping too much or watching netflix like we can try and avoid those emotions right but here's the thing when we are suppressing those emotions emotions is just energy um so when we're suppressing those emotions like it's okay, like I'm fine, everything's fine. I'm gonna think positive and that's what I'm gonna attract, like it's fine. And then you you suppress those emotions. Suppressed emotions can, you know, turns into anxiety. Suppressed anxiety can turn into depression. Suppressed depression can turn into illness or disease in the body. And you know, at the end of the day, we have to feel. And you know what the, the I think the best teachers are for this are, are toddlers, you know, yeah. because they have tantrums, right? Yeah. And what, what's so, you know, I mean, it's painful to be there, but right. what's beautiful about it is that, you know, you know, mama, can I have this? No, you can't have it. And they're like, <sighs> like they feel that <laughs> anger, that sense of injustice, yeah. like 10 out of 10, you know, they're like, F yeah. you. And they're like, yeah why why can't i have it and maybe they're like slamming their arms around maybe they're stomping maybe if, if they're brave they're on the floor and you know yeah. full body tantrum whatever that is so they feel it 10 out of 10 and they get it out 10 out of 10. right and as adults like you know so, i don't know whatever we go through a breakup we have a miscarriage we don't get the position we wanted at work or whatever that looks like and then all of a sudden we're like it's fine it's yeah fine. and we let it out in a sentence and it's like we we felt it 10 out of 10 and maybe we got it out you know one out of 10 and it's like where's that other 90 percent we're storing it in our body mm -hmm. so i teach my my clients how to have like healthy tantrums so i mean and this is a solo mission because if we store that energy in we are gonna lose it on our kids right we walk in the, the rooms a mess I'm like why aren't you cleaning up i've asked you a million times and it's like mm -hmm. man your anger has nothing to do with the toys on the ground right right or someone cutting you off or so it really kind of like a, a pot boiling over we're spewing it out on all you know all different types of people but at the end of the day it's really like that stored energy that needs to come out um so things that you can do is like you can put on angry music and like dance you can pound your pillow you can 
Um, my, one of my favorites is putting um, ice in a re reusable grocery bag and like smashing that up. <laughs> you hear it breaking and you don't have to clean up anything. Right. <laughs> screaming in your car by yourself, but like just get that energy right. out. And once you kind of get it out, because I think a lot of times people are like, Ooh, that was tough. Okay, but what were the lessons? And it's like, you cannot bypass your emotions and go to the lessons and try and gain clarity or a sense of peace without feeling. You've got to go through those emotions. So get it out, or you could grab a journal. Um, if it's something that was like, oh man, that stung. Maybe it's like, I kind of write like an F you letter. Like, yeah. F you, I can't believe you did this. And, da -da -da. Right. and it, it's so messy. I don't care about grammar. I don't care about spelling. You know, you can't even really read it. Like I'm going so fast. Um, but, I'm, but again, I'm getting that energy out. Um, so, you know, check in with yourself. Do I have this stored build up energy? Can I release it in a healthy way so I don't take it out on my kids or my partner or whatever, right? Right. So, yeah. That, I, I love that. Like that's on a daily basis. I think that's a lot of what parents are going through is that as adults, we suppress a lot of emotions and then we take it out on, you know, other people around us. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I was right writing this down just as you were talking, but I think when people start this process, um, as adults, I think they really need to break it down into steps. And I think that's a really good idea with the physical release because, a lot of adults, I think, fear, you know, being judged um, for, you know, the disappointment. So it's like, yeah, your boss saying like, you didn't get the job. And, you know, mm -hmm. imagine if you had a tantrum right there and then like, you just, you, you couldn't do that, yeah. right? No. <laughs> or, you know, something where you're not allowed to have something and, you know, you can't get it at the grocery store and it didn't, it didn't, your shipment didn't come in. And, you know, we have, we're having all these issues right now with our shipments and stuff not coming in and, yeah. you know, Adults, we have to sort of have etiquette, I guess. And yes. um, I think it's it's a good way to release energy. And, and when I thought about it myself, I'll, when I do things to kind of release energy, it's more like physical exercise. So I like to lift weights because mm -hmm. it's heavy and I have to push back against resistance. So it tires me out. So that's kind of what helps reduce my anxiety. And I ha if I haven't worked out in a couple of days, I start to get really antsy and my family members start to notice that as well and that's where i need to actually like physically do something that's hard um to push back against something that is giving a lot of resistance right um that's great and i love the uh the notion of like journaling and writing it down and when i thought about it i was like man if i have to use a pen like my hands hurting because i'm writing so fast or you know yeah. typing or things like that and what i like to do at the end is i like to rip it up and i like to burn it in a, in a pan yeah. or something please don't set a fire at your house you know but safety, yeah. <laughs> safety first <laughs> but it's it's therapeutic and i've got mm -hmm. my sons to write it too like you know if they've wanted to write a letter or things like that we never send anything but if you're frustrated and angry and obviously what's going on in the world too a lot of people are frustrated and angry and there's a lot of that mm -hmm. going on and adults are suppressing it and it's it's going to cause a lot more disease in people if they aren't managing it and dealing with it on a regular basis, right? So So true. So true. Good yeah. lesson. I love that. So what's your number three? My number three is your number one job in life. All of our number one jobs in life is to feel good, is yeah. to feel good. And that, as I was mentioning, that hierarchy of emotions, right? The lowest vibrational energy is like shame, guilt, yeah. anger, frustration, grief. And when we're, when our home base, like when we're kind of in that, um, in that vibe for long periods of time, we cannot heal, we cannot feel good, we cannot manifest our dreams or whatever we'd like mm -hmm. to see happen. Even if we're like, okay, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do a little self-care routine and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna work out and I'm gonna journal and maybe I'll pull an affirmation card or I'll make a smoothie. And then, you know, see, so maybe you take care of yourself for an hour of the day. And then the rest mm -hmm. of the 11 hours of the day, you're freaking out about whatever your biggest fear is. Oh my God, am I going to have enough yeah. money to pay for this? What am I going to do with the kids? Oh, what's that? You know, what am I going to do for this? Isn't that? And then that's all with the majority of your energy is going to be going. So your right. number one job is to feel good. So the moment you bring awareness to not feeling good, it's like, how can I make this more enjoyable? Maybe I'm working at my desk. Maybe I put some music on and maybe I'm kind of mm -hmm. dancing in my seat as I'm working. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> feeling good and I'm elevating elevating, you know, my vibe. Also, you want to be so mindful, not only for our kids, but for us as well. You want to be really mindful of what you're watching, what you're reading, what you're listening. Joe Dispenza says, do not watch, read, or listen anything that you don't want to manifest. Right. Well, I can tell you growing up, I mean, I used to watch like Unsolved Mysteries, Rescue, you know, 911 or 999 or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But 
kinds of crazy shows and I'm like, ooh, like this can happen. So even if you're watching something and you know, ah, that's not real, you're having a physical reaction. So your body's right. reacting if it's real. So it's really, really important, you know, for all the moms out there to be your own parent. Um, so anytime that you're feeling off, you know, go in and check with you, check in with yourself, almost like an inner child. I mean, you can close your eyes and visualize, you know, younger self kind of coming up. And sometimes, you know, I'll talk to myself and I'm like, okay, baby girl, like, what do you need? I'm like, well, I didn't sleep very well last night. Okay, maybe, can you take a nap? Can I push back a meeting? You know, do I need some more water? Like, ooh, yeah, I've been carrying my water, but I'm not drinking it. So yeah, right. I'll drink more water. Am I taking any whole food supplements? Am I, you know, eating well today? You know, uh, do I need to move my body? Yeah, I haven't worked out in a couple of days. Okay, let's move your body. So kind of go through a checklist like you would a young child to make sure you're feeling good. But anything in your life, like your career, relationship, anything that is soul sucking, find a way to make it more enjoyable or have the courage, you know, usually, you know, with help to um, open another door, right? right. To see exactly. something that lights you up because we're not meant to come here and suffer. We're not meant to just survive motherhood or survive our day. Um, right. So if you have the courage to really light up your life as, as much as you can. It's, it's impossible to be happy all the time. I'm not saying that it's very mm -hmm. like, fluid, um, you know, going up those emotions. But if your home base is higher up, um, you're going to feel good. You're going to manifest. You're going to, you know, through the laws of attraction, you're going to be attracting the right relationships, the right opportunity, the right experiences into your life with, you know, with speed as well. Mm -hmm. That's, that's great. I like that. I think just what I took out of that is like small moments. So when I think about it, um, when I'm not feeling well, like, and I'm sitting at my desk and I'm like, I'd rather be in bed or something. I put on very peaceful music and listen to it. I'll put like a blanket around me. Um, I'll put a candle on, like some incense going, just so like you can kind of make yourself feel like you're being more comforted. Um, another one I found, like what you talked about was the reading and the TV. So what you're listening to, what you're reading, you know, especially before you go to bed and you know, that kind of starts to getting the monkey brain going. So yeah. being aware of what you're actually like putting in your brain and and the conversations I think going on around you and what you're letting in as well. Um, and then the small moments, I think just even while like if you don't enjoy cooking or cleaning um, is putting on like some music and dancing around, like you said, as you're, you know, folding the laundry or making dinner for the kids. And I, I find that those are like the stressful times for a lot of moms because it's the end of the day. Like they feel like they've kind of lost the end of their rope. and. That's where I put on like music and I have my boys kind of just playing around, goofing off and just letting them be kids. And there's no structure at that time because they just need to burn off some energy. And this is where mom's just like making dinner and I've got like music going um, or something positive I'm listening to, right? Like I don't want to get to the end of my day and, you know, have more kind of put on my plate on my back and listening to, you know, like the, the garbage around us right now, right? So yeah. Um, something really positive, I think, for you, for the end of your day, for sure. Yes. Yeah, no, that's, it's so true. And, and, um, and even at the end of the afternoon, a girlfriend had posted about her girlfriend starting this holistic health school. Enrollment was now open, messaged her right away, got my kids enrolled. Um, and I was like, whoa, like there was my miracle. So, it, you know, it's crazy when you set that intention and you become, instead of reacting throughout the day, but you're really kind of becoming that creator of the day um, in the beginning and then closing off your night and really kind of, again, kind of taking inventory as like, you know, what went well today? Because a lot of times we can kind of focus on what didn't go well. And I love that right. you're, you know, have that free time. And even with our kids, you know, every time we put them to sleep, we're always like, what was the best part of your day? So we're right. getting them to reflect on what was working, um, you know, throughout their day. So yeah, I love that nighttime routine that you're saying we usually as well um we've gotten into the habit of asking the boys what they're grateful for and we've done it as like a almost a daily practice ourselves so it's kind of at the end of the day like what are you grateful for and it's it's even better when we've all kind of had a stressful day and things haven't gone well it's kind of like okay so what was the silver lining of today and we kind of go around and you know and it's it's tempting to want to say what you you don't want to happen like we've talked about before but we're trying to refocus the brain and get you know get them and ourselves like into a more positive mindset so 
Yeah. And, you know, so we also ask our kids, what was the worst part of the day? And then we yeah. kind of dissect that. Um, like, yeah, that wasn't fair that that happened. So we'll, you know, we'll justify their emotions and things like that. And then we'll say like, because we always normalize failure. We try and normalize yeah. failure in the house, which they don't really do in school, do they? Because right. they're like, you've got to get A's across the board. Yeah. But uh, so we always try and normalize the failure with the, with the kids. And it's like, what didn't work today? What didn't go well? Um, so getting them to reflect so that they don't just always have to be, you know, positive, but having that balance um, and then, you know, having that conversation. So it's not just like, how was your day at school? Fine. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. Crickets, nobody's talking. So I love that. It's good to give them a voice and yourself a voice. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. you doing that practice yourself and working on that, I think is really helpful. And I think that's where if you can't always say things out loud, um, writing them down and I think that's where I think a lot of people um, they struggle to kind of voice their concerns right so I think so that's sure. a great way to start do you have anything else you wanted to share with us today here Charlotte before we get going yeah, I just think, you know, moms, like the biggest and like the greatest gift that you can give your kids is truly investing in yourself. And when you have the courage to invest in yourself, when you have the courage and truly, you know, to feel healthier and happier and create that sense of peace, no matter what's going on in your personal life or no matter what's going on in this crazy world of ours, if you're able to, you know, to find that peace in, in, the, in the center of the storm, you are naturally investing in your kids. And then all of a sudden they're learning, hey, like mom's prioritizing her health or happiness or sense of piece, I'm going to do the same. So it's not just, right. you know, they're watching us, not just listening to us. So I think that's one of the greatest gifts that you can give your kids is investing in your own health. I love that. And that's exactly what, you know, drew me to a healthy family starts with a healthy parent, because if you mm -hmm. don't take care of yourself first, everything else can kind of fall apart. And you've got to be able to be the one to lead that and teach it to others, right? You can't say, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing like that. People don't learn that way. So I love that um, motto. And I think that you've given us some really great lessons here today. So I really appreciate you coming on the show, Charlotte. So how can our viewers today get in contact with you? Yeah, so they can go to um, healthshiro.com and I've got some freebies there, raising healthy kids, um, like ebook with all kinds of amazing tips. I've got a free okay. training on there you can go check out. I'm also on Instagram, health underscore um, Shiro. Uh, so you can check me out there too. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And I think this would be some great ways for moms to actually have like an ebook or something to start them out with because a lot of people don't really know where to start and they feel kind of frazzled right now. And these have been some amazing tips and I love it. And it was interesting that you kind of picked up on, on what I was already doing as well. So that's amazing. So thank you so much for coming on today, Charlotte. And um, yeah. We will we'll be posting this very soon for all the mummies as well. Uh, thank you so much, Bethany. So, so grateful. Thank you.